really know how more form-fitting items uh, are going to be fit. Before we go on, I know I've gone through a lot of kind of the supply chain stuff here. Does anybody have any questions about any of the words we've talked about or how to calculate the margin? Cool. Vocab lesson again, manufacturer suggested retail price and minimum advertised price. And so life is one big vocabulary quiz. Any of the words you didn't understand or you want to better understand, go to investopedia.com, look it up. I want to be completely honest with you, I looked up profit margin on Investopedia getting ready for this lecture to make sure that I was intelligent enough and telling you the right thing. So even I have not figured it all out and people ask about margin, it can be really confusing. Double check the math, make sure you understand um, what it is they're asking for. All right, so now we're going to dive into Accounting 101. Um, and in... On the Google Drive, I added a folder tonight for Accounting 101. Is anybody taking accounting this year? Cool. These may be quite helpful for you. Um, and whether or not you remember what you learned in that class, I'm going to very quickly give you the cheat sheet of what I learned as a 27-year-old running a business that was not profitable and had not done a good job accounting for my income statements and balance sheets, what to do in order to get the books in order just from a legal standpoint of doing the right thing, but also being able to pitch to investors and speak intelligently about um, revenue and cost of goods sold and margins and operations and things like that. Did you do your own accounting for your business? Yeah. Uh, there, was a, there was like a year or two where we outsourced and had somebody else do it, and that was great. Um, but that also cost a couple thousand dollars, and I realized it wasn't necessarily worth it. Um, because we weren't making enough money to rationalize that cost. So accounting, it's basically about revenues and liabilities, expenses, assets, things like that. So for your balance sheet, it's assets equals liabilities plus equity. So your assets is how much cash you have, how much inventory you have. Um, I actually got a call today from an entrepreneur who is made the decision to shut down his business and needs to figure out how to do that. And my first questions were, how much cash do you have in the bank? How much inventory do you have? What other assets do you own? Like, I'm trying to figure out the left side of this balance, that, um, balance sheet because he also has an investor who invested $100,000, which is on this liability side. And he doesn't actually have enough on the left-hand side to pay back that $100,000. But before he goes into that meeting, you need to have a conversation uh, or kind of prepare and get your books in order. And I was like, if your accounting is not up to date for December 31st last year, do that right away. Make sure the books are properly documented, you've accounted for things the right way. Um, liabilities, yeah, Claire? Unrelated, but when people invest and, they, and like the company collapses, so what do they do? Do you have to pay back the investment? Not necessarily, no. Short answer is no. Um, from my personal experience, uh, Wayborn went bankrupt. And when a company goes bankrupt, you go through a whole court process, and the court eventually issues a letter to each of the debtors, like the people that you owe money to, and they get capital losses. So the silver lining when I called up the investors was, you know, a uh, company is filing for Chapter 7 bankruptcy. There's going to be no financial return on your investment. However, you will get, you know, $25,000 worth of capital losses, which means for the next 20 years, any time if you invest, you bought Apple stock, you bought Tesla stock and then went, went up a bunch and then you sell it and you make $3,000, that's called capital gains. And you get taxed at a very high rate, like 30% or something, when you sell the stock and you realize those gains. However, if you have a letter saying, hey, I lost $100,000 on this other investment, it cancels that out and you don't have to pay any taxes from the capital gains you've realized. And you can actually roll that over for up to 20 years. So, I mean, it's not ideal to have lost money investing in the company. However, if you have other investments and you should always have a diversified portfolio where not all your eggs are in one basket, it will balance out um, you know, some of those taxes. Does the money you get like, accepted from always equal the money you lost? It, uh, it depends. Uh, like the people who invested in Waveborn, they invested at a certain amount plus five to eight percent interest rate. So from the day they invested, I also had to learn how to calculate interest from each specific date to this December 30th, 2016, when we shut it down, how much interest they had. So then instead of it being like $25,000, it was like 26742 and 12 cents. 
And because they lost that amount, they get that like as a tax write-off. Yeah. Okay. So and that's like it's incentivized investment or. It's not to incentivize the investment, but it's like the small benefit they get for... But like, why does the government... Well, like, what's in it for the, for the government to give them capital... Um, capital losses? losses yeah. um, I'm going to... Don't... Don't quote... I'm, I am not confident in what I'm about to say, which is my disclaimer. I would Google and Investopedia as well. But my understanding is it's like government accounting for the personal. Like, if you have a bunch of capital losses, and you have some capital gains, they kind of cancel each other out, and I shouldn't tax all your capital gains because you actually lost way more money than you gained. Um, and like for my company, each year we were not profitable, so we didn't have to pay the government a lot of taxes because you can't be taxed when you're not making money. You know, if we're doing business, there's money changing hands, but we actually spent way more money than we brought in from customers. So there wasn't like a high tax rate, whereas if you're profiting, thousands or hundreds of thousands or millions of dollars as a business, you will have to pay corporate taxes on the, the profits you have each year. So there's also some benefits too to have more expenses. Uh, we'll get to the income statement where we kind of look at that uh, for tracking your expenses, yeah. Uh, would both debt and equity holders be like compensated the same amount, like in the same way? Um, no, it, it, uh, so like equity holders basically got nothing. So like you don't have capital losses if you had shares of the company that are now defunct and not worth anything. And they're both on the right-hand side, the liabilities and the equity, you kind of add them together to equal the assets. And so a balance sheet is just a snapshot in time. You basically need a balance sheet on December 31st each year and maybe the end of each quarter, so March 31st, June 30th, and September 30th. You don't need a balance sheet all day, every day. Your income statement, you need a lot more frequently. Um, and that's like kind of counting up till then how much money has come in that year, and then your cash flows will actually fluctuate on a daily basis. When cash comes in, cash flow goes up. When you pay any vendor or employee or all of those shipment things in the supply chain, um, that comes into, boom. Here's a very quick example of balance sheet. Uh, for an income statement, it's revenue minus expenses equals net income, or sales minus costs equals profit. Very straightforward. Um, uh, and so like the balance sheet, again, you have at the end of this year, you have at the end of the next year, the income statement, you're looking, it's like a video camera. There you go, that's the analogy. You're looking at it throughout the year. Um, operating activity, yeah. cash flow statements, look at uh, things people are investing in you, things you're investing in, any operating expense, so anything on those supply chain stuff, that's all operations. Um, and then any financing, if you're taking out loans, if you're bringing in, uh, you know, banking related things. Cool. So that's that. I want to show you. Can you share that with us? It's all in the Google Drive folder. So I've uploaded this, and this is what I'm doing in five minutes because I didn't want to get too detailed. <coughs> this is a very simple income statement. It's for company ABC. It's basically a template that I made for entrepreneurs who don't know accounting. I can send them this folder. They can then build it on, you know, what was their sales? YTD is year to date, so from January 1st to today's date. Um, cost of goods sold, and then your operating expenses, people, any salaries, would you pay yourself, would you pay other people, sales and marketing, uh, any marketing activities, any branding, packaging, uh, product delivery is shipping. Um, if you have a giving model, donations will go in there. You can also then make multi-year projections. And there are, I believe, when you download it, uh, like formulas in here that will calculate and kind of ripple out how big do you think things are going to grow. What's fun, and I think the most useful, is the cash flows. And this is now on a month-to-month -month basis for the entire year. What's your opening balance? Um, how much cash do you have from sales each month? And I, yeah, these numbers are made up, but they're probably related to something I thought might happen in a sunglass company at some point in time. Um, you have different products, how much sales coming in from them, if you're going to roll out a new product at some point, how much are you projecting to earn each month, uh, and you want to have these projections and then also have an actual, so what's actually happened, so you're documenting that uh, and comparing what's the difference, like did you predict it accurately um, or were you way off by, you know, an order of magnitude of 10 or 100. And then you get down um, for the operating activities, you've got the cost of goods sold. So how much does it cost to make these things? Um, and then SGA is selling general and administrative. So most of your operations activities are going to fall in here. 
Um, retail displays pop materials for, it means a point of purchase. So you design an end cap, if I had a sunglass display, the stores never actually pay for those things. You as the brand give them extra things to present your product in a way that looks beautiful. Um, salaries, training, um, marketing, travel, car, gas, parking, technology, laptops, cell phones, hosting a website, all of these things factor into your cash flows. You have monthly recurring bills you have to pay to keep the business online and the lights on. You have rent for office space. All of these things get factored into your cash flows. And now can somebody remind me what we learned from Wu-Tang? Exactly. This document is the most important document. Understanding it, keeping it in track. You may not look at it every day, look at it at least every Friday. And like document every single dollar that came into your account and every single dollar that went out that week, and you're not going to be surprised. You're not going to, uh, you know, sometimes, even as an individual, you may be scared about looking at your bank account and not knowing which money you spent, and if I just pretend that there's a bunch of money in there, I'm sure it'll be great. That's a really bad way to run a business, and also a really bad way to run, run your personal budget. Um, and so making sure you know, hey, next month I'm going to expect this much in expenses. If you're going to expect $5,000 in expenses, how do you guarantee you're going to make $6,000 or more in revenue? Especially if your starting bank account only has $700 in it. You know, you need to make sure that there's cash coming in to pay the bills, and this also factors into how do you negotiate payment terms with your supplier, your vendors. Um, <coughs> I think I mentioned earlier, like when we sold to surf shops, they asked for net 30. So net 30 means I deliver the product, they have 30 days to pay me. That is great for them, that helps me absolutely not at all. And some of them were net 90, some people paid at the end of the summer, whereas if people pay you before you even manufacture the product, so think about a crowdfunding campaign like a Kickstarter or an Indiegogo. That's the best, and it's great for companies that don't have enough money to make the product. To say, hey, all of you give me 100 bucks, great, I got 1,500 bucks, I'm now gonna go make this thing, and then I'll deliver it to you in three or six months, you set a realistic timeline, but it means I didn't have to have 1,500 bucks to make 15 of these widgets. I'm able to use your money and have like a negative cash conversion cycle, uh, as opposed to saying it takes me you know, 120 days to, from when I pay a manufacturer, it goes through this whole supply chain thing we've looked at, I deliver it to the customer, and then I get the money. The quicker you turn product back into cash, the cash conversion cycle, the more effective the business will be, and the faster you can grow, because you're turning inventory, you're selling through, and you're able to then make more uh, of the things that you want. So again, this is all in the um, student resources folder, there's accounting 101 right there. We went over this. Um, does anyone know what pro forma means? Like standard form? Yeah. Just like this is default, this is what I think it's going to look like. Um, income statement we went over. Yeah. And so again, I had Googled or I Investopedia what is a profit margin so I could copy and paste it in here and make sure I'm telling you exactly how it's calculated. And it's basically for each dollar that comes in, how many cents on that dollar is profit versus the cost of goods sold or the operating activities. Assets equals liabilities plus net worth or equity. And we're gonna finish right on time. So looking ahead to next week, by next week I mean before you go to bed tonight, everybody needs to add in the book they're gonna read, the audio book if they haven't already, and pick a time slot for the final presentation. Next week, we are going to focus on customer discovery. It's going to be a lot more fun. Um, you should also be reflecting on the ideas you've come up so far this semester. Uh, and you're going to next week pick an idea to move forward with probably for the rest of the semester. Unless you do the customer discovery and realize it's a terrible idea, then you are allowed to switch to something else, which is why we're going to talk about the importance of getting out of the building, talking to customers, getting their feedback. Um, and the two things for next week, you got to watch a 10-minute video, um, and then you have to spend four dollars and ninety-nine cents on Amazon to buy this ebook. It's written by John Jabara, who's another one of the entrepreneurs in residence here at Georgetown, and it is an incredibly valuable resource. I have read it like eight times already. It is full of template scripts of questions to ask for customer discovery. So anytime you have a new idea you want to think through, you can quickly flip through this ebook, take some of the questions, put them into the specific business. Um, and then you'll be set to go ask a bunch of questions. Clara? Is the book report for the book book or the audio book? You get to pick. And you can pick one now and you can change it to the other one if you decide you like the other one more. So why are we in the car guard instead of MSB now? 
this is such a better setting for teaching. Oh, you chose this? Sure. Okay. I have also learned that there are various levels of bureaucracy in organizations that far outweigh my pay grade, and I am delighted for the opportunities to instruct you in any environment that may be deemed appropriate by the university. I mean, I work in the registrar's office, so I can schedule us a room every night at like 7 to 7.50 if you want. Let's talk about that offline. That's <laughs>